I can't believe it. I look at Ryan and they were little boys when I came in. And they grown folk with children. Hey, Amen. They got a lot of children. See, I told you, God give you what you asked for because Kathy, I think, might have wanted a girl. She didn't get one of her own loins, but of her long extended loins. She got about six. I think about well, six of them. Yeah, Lord, have mercy. Better you than me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do all that hair. That's what I wouldn't want to do. That little scholar got some hair on that head. Well, listen, y'all, there's a text. There's a text that I want you all to consider with me. And I want to read it all. I want to read it all. It starts in 1 Thessalonians, Paul's first letter to the church of Thessalonica, um, chapter 5. Beginning at verse 1, reading the verse 9. I would that you would stand in deference for the reading of God's word. If you can, if you can stand, please stand. I said some people are probably on the road. A couple of families on the road for the Thanksgiving holidays. So we pray for driving mercies for them as they try to get their way back here. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. About the, the time and the season, brothers and sisters, you do not need anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. This is what the text says. When they say peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, like labor pains on a pregnant woman. Listen to the imagery. And they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are, are not in the dark. For this day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. So then, let us not sleep like the rest, but let us stay awake and be controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled and put on the armor of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us, listen, to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other up as you are already doing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Remain standing. We want to extend right now an invitation to Christian discipleship. The deacons are going to face you. The preachers are going to face you. Their hands are going to be lifted. Now that they are in position, you may be seated for the appeal. We take it not for granted that even the most familiar of faces is saved. That's not something that's within my freedom to know. All I can hope and believe is that you have come to the realization that salvation is your only way out of this life. And you can die unsaved, but if you die unsaved, hell and destruction are your reward. But if you live and you die in the Lord, the Bible says you will rest from all of your labor and your work will follow you. Beloved, all I want God to do when you die is remember your name. So that when you get to the gates of the kingdom and knock, the gate will be open to you. And he will allow you entrance. As a matter of fact, the word of God does tell us he will allow you to come in and sup with him. And he will be your God, and you will be his eternal people. 
Now, while I believe that salvation is for the Jew, I also believe that it's for the Greek. I also believe that it is for the Negro. And I believe that if anybody's coming back for anybody, God's coming back for the Negro. Because we've been through great trial and tribulation, persecutions, through all manner of evil done to us, and yet we have held fast to our hope and our faith, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ. This appeal is given now, but at a later point in the service, we will extend again the invitation to come and to give your life to Christ. If the Lord rests upon you this day, be not shy about the matter. Stand quickly, step out into the aisles, come down, because that is your first profession of faith. And then the Bible says in Romans 10 and 9, if you believe in your, with your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you believe that God raised him from the dead. That's just how simple it is to be saved. God wills that you all be saved. None be lost. I believe that. If he didn't mean that, then he would have never sent his son down from heaven to earth to die on a cross so that we might have life and have it more in the above. Amen. 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 Thank you, deacons. You may be seated. Preachers, you may be seated. Well, let's get in the mood of Christmas. Let's get in the mood of Christmas. I got a song I want you to hear. And I, I'm finding these songs. And, and, you know, one of the things that the black church has always done, we've always wedded the sacred and the secular. Uh, here, here it is simply put. Whatever went on in the nightclub on Friday, Saturday night, found a way to morph into Sunday morning worship. We brought the, we brought the drummer, the guitar player, the piano player, and the, and the organ player to church. They might have been drunk, but they came. Um, the, the same people that were singing in the club usually were the best people in the director choir, so they came to the director choir. And all of the upright and unright were in the choir. And so we joined together and we sang on Sunday morning. That's just us. Ain't we lying about the tell the truth, shame the devil. Tell the truth, shake the devil. Amen. And all you people have been saved all my life. Some of y'all been saved. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Essex, get your wife. <laughs> you know. Hey, listen, man. I thank God for the club. Because it was at the club that we found out we needed Jesus. Can't drink so many drink. Can't hang on the bar so long. So, some of y'all blood won't know. Now, play the song, please. And the truth will make you free. Us as you can sit down. I just want to talk a little truth over these four sides about this whole business of Christmas and uh, the celebration of Christmas. And what when I say mood, the mindset of the believers is versus what it should be. Now, let's talk about let's talk about Santa. Well, this is why I'm the parents to, you know, let your children go, because I ain't trying to let your children go. But if I had come down the steps on the west side of Baltimore and seen a white man fiddling around my mama tree, I'd have been all messed up. Because I, first of all, how you get in? We had no chimney, so he must have broken. in. Now, I'm on point because the text says, we know not today when the thief shall come. I would have thought, as an inner city kid, that this white man was breaking in my house, stealing what my mama had worked hard to get. Uh, mama told us the truth early on. You know, she was the same one. I think she had a little James Brown kinfolk in her. She, you know, um, she, she told us, she said, I'm your mama and your dad. My daddy left, said, I'm your mama and your dad. And then somewhere along the line, when we thought we were thugging, she said, and I'm that nigga in the alley, I will bust a cap in y'all. And, and then, you know, I was, I was always confused because she told me, and the youngest said, I'll kill you, make another look just like you. Well, I knew I was a doctor, so I'm trying to figure out how she would do that. But I dared never ask her because I feared my mama. I mean, up until the time that I was playing college football, I feared my mama. She said, You couldn't go to the club. We can't want you to go to the club. She said, You were going to jump out the napper for all three services and the interludes. That's what we did. You know? Um, but this sound. And, 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 and there is an understanding. Lore says that somewhere in Europe there was a 
priest by the name of Nicholas, who was benevolent, and he loved children, had no children of his own. But he would make gifts for the children in the community that he served. And later he was sainted by the church. So you know this is Catholicism. We don't saint you. You don't saint nobody in the Baptist church. You just pray they don't just act ugly. You know, but, but so he was sainted. So Saint Nicholas was a person. Okay? However, however, it is not that person, that bearded person in the red suit with the, you know, the white beard, and, you know, that takes him forever to grow. You know, I, 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 I want to know Santa Claus the secret to growing beard, too, because my beard got white, and it just looked like it stopped growing. It gets so big, you know. But when it was black, some of y'all get that in the morning. You know, obviously, ain't got no beard, no chin hairs, ladies. I mean, you know, so, you know, you know, yeah. I hate to get a pair of bad news. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no white man dressed up with no dad on white suit and red suit, you know, to live with kids. Here's the other thing. There are only one set of deer that can be domesticated. And that, that's reindeer of Eurasia. They can be domesticated and hooked up because they're used to draw slay. That's the only deer. They, they, they are male and female. They have those huge antlers. They can be domesticated. You can't take no reindeer and make it pull no slay. You go ahead and get you a deer. And hook them up to your sleigh. Your sleigh will be all in the woods. They're going to do what they know to do. They, they, they're not domesticated. They're wild creatures. That's why they get hit. We build these fabulous homes and communities, and we shrink the environment, and we find them all over the road. But you don't, you're not going to see a reindeer, because reindeer are domesticated. They're kept on large farms in the Eurasian regions. Okay, so we got that out of the way. They can be hooked up. They will draw a sleigh. They're just like a horse or an ox, or some other domesticated creature. Got that. Um, the other thing is, this is the part that's unfathomable to me. You got this white man and his wife that live at the North Pole. Right? Year round at the North Pole. And once a year, he has the ability to discern the naughty of the nights of children all over the northern hemisphere. Do you know how large the northern hemisphere? You know, North, North America, South America, parts of Asia, parts of Africa. He didn't know. But then I listened to the song. He's going to find out who's naughty or not. Which means that if he has to find out, listen to me, think with me, then he is not omnipotent. He is not omni-all. He is not all of all things. He is not all-knowing. He has to, he needs, a, maybe that's what them little, them little pointed at fellas and gals that work with him do. You know, because they're elves, and you know, elves are mythical creatures short stature, pointed ears, and capricious. They, they can be good, and they can be evil. They, they can disappear and show up and disrupt some stuff. You know, that's what demonic forces all. <laughs> I'm trying to help somebody. You know, you, you know, come on, you can't be telling your children that little devils make they. I was thinking about Marcel Malone. Marcel Malone told me one year, we were talking about Christmas. He said, I don't reward bad behavior. Santa Claus says, contention upon whether you're naughty or nice. Well, when I was a kid, if you were naughty, you got cold in your side. So you mean Santa Claus told the whole lot of... <laughs> See, the man, used, the man used to deliver coal to our house. We had, we had, we had a coal stove in Baltimore, and, and they would dump this coal in the basement door, and it would just stack and you had to go down there and get it. Well, you, one piece of coal don't do much for heat. You got to put some coal in the coal stove, coal burning stove. Now, all y'all, all y'all Negroes ain't had central heat now all your lives. Y'all know what I'm talking about. A good 
coal. You, you, anybody else get a pop of stove, coal stove? You put coal in it, and in the cold, they get hot, red hot, or as, as I want to use the term, they white hot, and they won't hot. So you're telling me this, this one man with these elves and these deer hooked up, draw all of this coal, because everybody can't be nice. Got to be a whole lot of coal given out. But he don't really know that. So he has to take super abundant amounts of coal. He really don't, he's going to find out. But I'm trying to figure out this. When are you going to find out? It takes him, I thought about this thing. I've been playing this all week long. It takes him 364 days to find out what he's going to do on one night of the week. My point. He's not on. Only God knows, right? Santa rewards nice or naughty. Y'all listen to this? God rewards you in spite of good and evil. Amen. Y'all listen to that. How do you know? Because I read the Bible. Every now and then. One day we got to read the Bible real good. And that's the week that I'm preparing because once I get the text, then I don't need to read the Bible real, real good. I just need to glean from it. It says he reigns on the just and on the unjust, and he causes his sun to shine on the evil and the good. It's raining outside, and you church folk didn't miss getting wet. When y'all, y'all so crazy. When y'all got out your car, the rain just stopped around your car, and you walked through a tunnel. <laughs> I know some of y'all want to believe that about yourself, but I came by to tell you, you got wet this morning. Because it was raining. And if the sun came out right now, the sun wouldn't shine on you holy folk and not on the unholy folk. He shines on the upright and the unright at the same time. Anything God gives good, the bad people experience. You see, it seems like God would make conditions bad for the pimp, the drug dealer, but he don't. They out there selling drugs in the sunshine. There was a song of everybody likes the sunshine. You know? But the tax savers, what we do, we do based upon our conscious mind that is not lost in darkness because we have been informed by the light, I'm getting ready to read the text, of Christ. Christ came into a dark world to bring light to men so that they would not have to grope in darkness. People who are of the dark like the dark. You ever notice? When you're going to the club, you know, I can talk to you, bro. Me and you, you know, one time you go to the club. You ain't going to the club, club at no 5.30. You start getting ready at 5.30. Pour you about a drink, you know, drink that, sip on that, roll you up a joint, tote that, you know. Then you get your shot. You right, man. Get you another drink, another tote. Now it's about 9.30. Now you can sit down and relax, get you a nap. You might need a nap. You might need to feed the munchies. You know, come on, I'm just talking about my own experience. I don't know how y'all did it, but I know how I did it. And, and then I get myself up. Then I would sit down in my clothes because I wanted my stuff to be fresh. That's when we used to wear jeans with creases on them, like we just got out of prison. <laughs> Go to the club. You know, you didn't walk the circle because you didn't want to, you ain't want to wrinkle yourself when you got in the club. But once you got in the club, then you stop walking the stiff way and you stop. <laughs> she had to look at you and say, mm, you clean. You don't look bad yourself, do you? Don't be asking me for two drinks. You only gonna get one. One drink minimum tonight. <laughs> and then you had expectations of things that were not so nice, but that's when you're walking in the darkness. But when you came to the light, because you were children of God, so that means you're children of the light, you start walking a different way. See, I can't stand y'all because y'all been saved all my life, but I once was lost in sin, and the Lord found me. I didn't find him because I wasn't looking for him. Can I be honest with you? That's why I told you. I, I ain't going to talk. I ain't going to be moaning Santa Claus. 
Lord, and I'm going to tell you the truth about how we really live. I wasn't looking for them. I was looking to have a good time Amen. in the dark. Amen. Then when I got saved, I realized that what goes on in the dark, Amen. your right hand will find out in the light which your left hand really is doing. Right. Come on, somebody, talk to me. He can't hide the light. But the text also that nobody that wants to find his way seeks at night. You get lost at night. You know, I was up north. I was up around Washington, D.C. I was coming back in from dinner. And I went out to dinner. It was light. Come to all the nations look alike. I was glad I got that too. Exit 357. Exit 357. 0.32 miles. Ding! I did lost in the dark, but in the light. So when I left that day, I didn't leave in the dark. I left in the light. Because I could find my way in the... Because there are mile markers and there are things that you can see that you don't see as well that... Y'all need to help this up. Black preachers is about call and response, y'all. Don't make me work this on y'all don't y'all don't say nothing. You, you get my point? Yeah. Why are we still believing in Santa Claus? Why are you still in Santa Claus? That ain't truth. And you shall know the truth. Ain't no white man running no black children. Christmas, I called me for support. Are you insane? 
same. I ain't no, I ain't backing you on boycott no Christmas. I like Christmas too. I just know if anything under the tree, Santa Joy did it. Huh? Oh, oh, there you go, brother. Brother got it. And if I like it, I'll buy it myself and wrap it. And Christmas morning, I'll be like, for me? <laughs> Come on, I think you ain't never wrapped a gift for yourself. You ever been single, you wrap some gifts for yourself. You ain't nobody getting them. You wrap the gift. You're like, I ain't gonna just let this. Oh, 
Messiah or Christ. God, he said, I didn't appoint you to my hand, but I appointed you to salvation. Hallelujah. I, I want to give you the best gift that you ever got. I want to give you myself. In the person, the power, and the persona of my only one and only son, the historical Jesus of Nazareth, I'm going to wrap me in human flesh. Send him down. Look at the text. The text like a woman having labor pain. See, in order for us to uh, be able to identify, he could have done it from heaven, but he did it on earth. He did it the natural way. That's why all this unnatural stuff ain't right to me. And I ain't going to talk about it today, but I'm going to get to it before the... Well, you know, you know, you ain't, you don't, you don't, I, I asked you, I hope you did today. You don't need no two moms. You confuse the child until they got two moms. Two dads. Y'all look funny, man. Don't, don't, hey, hey, I ain't, I, I'm trying to say it without getting close to it. But come on, man. God raised us, most of us, in home that didn't have a daddy. And we turned out all right. You know why? Because mama wasn't talking about no Santa Claus. She was talking about God. She was teaching us about Jesus. Mama made us go to everything that went on at the church. When they changed the light bulb, so we went to see who changed the light bulb in the church. I don't know what, the, I don't know what she was going to be. Mama said, they, they're working on the church. We're going to the church. Mama, what they doing? Oh, they're they waxing the floor. What? Mama, what are you doing? We're coming out the church. High as a cooler from smelling stripper and wax. Hey, look, watch your man, but watch your back and flow. Everything went on the church. We were there. Mama, no, do y'all want us to ask y'all that y'all want to go to church? And now we come to church, we see and eat Christmas. Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. And then we act like we're doing somebody a favor. You ain't doing God no favor. You ain't doing your mama no favor by showing up on Mother's Day, don't show up all the time. That woman had labor pains messing with you. So you rest his head, your mama's in pain for 13, 14, 15 now. I'm glad God didn't make me a woman. You know, you could have walked up and dropped it and kept on moving, but there was a time when the mothers dropped babies in the fields, between the roads, and the midwives picked them up, and they might see them and they might not see them. God has brought us from a mighty long way. He brought us too far to continue in this darkness of lies and myth and legend when we have a very real God that we can call on. Am I making sense to anybody? And he sent his son so that we would not have to endure the eternal wrath, not the punishment of God. Christ died so that we might have life and have it more in the abundance. Santa Claus ain't that because he ain't never lived. Say it again, but he ain't that. He was in, ha! Look, if Santa Claus had been real, he'd be on the most money list. You know why? Because the text says he was a thief. And let me tell you why the text says he was a thief. Because he, he sang Nick, he fought for Christmas, he. Come on, y'all know that. Who loves this? Chris Kringle. If a Negro got more than one identity, <laughs> come on, y'all. Only a white man get away with having more than one identity. Multiple identities. Was he schizophrenic? I don't know. Y'all have. I know we acting crazy by telling, not telling our children the truth. God provides. You sitting here eating this meal, God provides. Don't you go off to college and come back and be all hanky talking to me about what ain't and what is. My mama told me that, and I still. I find myself saying stuff that my mama said to me that I swear I'd never say to my children. But it made good sense. It didn't make good sense then, but it makes good sense. I wish I had somebody to testify to what I'm talking about. I was talking to my little niece yesterday. I got a little play niece. She was at the house yesterday, and, and, and her parents were gone to the event, and, and so she was talking to me, and she kept talking to me, and she was saying some things to me about what she wanted. I was telling you, encouraging her dreams, and I could yeah, you're going to mess with mine. You're going to be a multifaceted individual in all facets of the world, and you're going to be doing something, 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 something. And she said something else, and I had to slow it down and say, you know your mom and your daddy will do anything they can for you. You know, everything that you have, you get it from your mom and your daddy. 
And I found myself, they say, your child, you can't tell her ain't no Santa Claus. And she started talking about her faith and what she believed. And I started thinking to myself, oh, they're doing a good job. And the Lord was affirming to me, this sermon needs to be preached. I ain't telling you, though. I ain't telling you not to tell your children. I ain't telling you, but I'm telling you, at some point, you got to tell your children the truth. Because if you keep lying to them, then they ain't going to have nothing to hold on to. Am I making sense? This sermon was not for children. Neither was it for people who walk in the darkness. The people that walk in the darkness, once you tell them they walk in the light, when they really walk. This ain't a sermon for the deceived or the deceivers. The Bible, the text says, let's read, let's look at one, uh, five, one through nine. The text says the day is going to come upon you like a thief in the night. You ain't going to get a chance to correct this stuff. You don't know when the Son of Man is going to show up. Anybody can tell you they know when Christ is coming back to tell you a lie. And, and look, look at the text. They say, they're going to be people that say, peace, peace, ain't no peace. They're going to be saying, suffering, suffering, ain't no suffering. You don't know. The angels don't even know. Jesus don't even know. The only one that knows when he's coming back is God. And if you read the text, when the text says he's coming back, the first one to come out of heaven is God. And then Christ with him. Good 
And one Friday evening, he went out to Calvary's cross and hung out so that I might have this right to stand in this place and preach the truth whether you want to hear it or not. This sermon wasn't about Santa Claus. This sermon is about raising your conscience so you can know who is the giver of every good and perfect gift. I'm talking about God. I came by to give the report that the God that we serve is still giving good gifts. How do you know, Reverend? Because you up in here this morning. He woke you up early this morning. You were clothed and in your right mind. You had a legal plan. Can you do it? Aren't you here? Anybody glad about it? The uh, reporters, they hung him high, stretched him wide. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. I'm going to talk to you next week. I can't talk this week about it, but next week I'm going to talk to you about these trees. Because they hung him on the tree. And the Bible says, curse is any man that hangs him on the tree. But it's a good tree that crucified, crucified my Jesus on. Surely he died upon Calvary's tree. Surely he descended into hell and preached captivity captive. Surely. Because he was never, ain't nobody called me and told me, said, you know, um, the priest, St. Nicholas, got up. He gonna get up. Because there's gonna be a great reckoning moment. And when the Lord comes, the heavens are gonna break. God is gonna descend. Christ is coming with him. There's gonna be a great shout in the heavens and in the earth, and the trump of God is gonna sound. The dead in Christ will not be hindered by those who are alive, but they shall get up. To beat the law in the air. So shall we ever be with the law. I know I'm on to something because the text ends. Look at the last verse. It said, Tell the truth to each other so that you might find comfort in it in a hard time. I stop by to tell you that God not dead, He's alive. How do you know? Because every now and then I can feel it. Way down in my sanctified soul is like fire. Shelf in my bones, it will not allow me to hold my feet. When I think about his goodness and good running in my feet, clapping in my hands, joy in my heart, a song on my lips. When I think about all that he done, all my soul can do is cry out, Hallelujah! My God. Huh? Rev, you just got something. That's right, because I don't know who he is to you, but I know who he is to me. I thank my God. If anybody else is God, come on to me. Anybody God, it's time to go home. Can you stand on your feet? I thank my God. That when I'm not your life, he still wants to save me.
sent you out, didn't it? They just threatened to send you out. Because when you're weak, then he's strong. And won't he show up? Father, you open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings. We can't get a sound out of this man talking about time. Because I preach what I believe. Amen. And I believe what the Bible says. Yeah. And I work real hard not to make up no stuff. Too much stuff in the Bible has to make up a lie. Right. You might not like this sermon. And I didn't tell your children not to believe the Santa Claus. But I sure did tell their mama and their daddy what they ought to think. You want to know where I got the title? It's, this move is about what you think. God wants to transform your mind during this season of Advent. Advent means coming. We are coming of age in a Trumpian America. And, and we thought that we had made some great strides. But we're seeing that even in the midst of these impeachment hearings, Things ain't still good for the Negro. But as long <laughs> as I got King Jesus. Okay. And you can say what you want to say. You can question my education if you want to. You can say, ain't no way in the world a scientific mind can think that there's really a God in heaven. No, I don't think he's in heaven. I believe he's down here right now with me. Yeah. Huh? He walks with me and talks with me. I God be for us. Yeah. Not, not be for us, but for us. Mm -hmm. Who in the world could be us? Yeah, against us. Mm. Well, I'm in it this way, Bob. I got to go. What shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? What? Can anybody, can one person raise their hand and tell me something? Just come on now. Come on, speak up. Not height, not death, not death. Not the realities of the world, yeah. not the lies of your president, yeah. nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in yeah. Christ. And it didn't it did get wrapped, it morphed. It became what it was going to be without anybody's help. I don't know where he came from, but I'm so sure glad he came. Yeah. I don't know why he sent his son, but I'm so sure glad he came. about 
about me. The only thing special about me. Leave you that I heard it. And not only did I hear it, I felt it. And when I felt it, I couldn't contain it. And I walked down. And it's still that simple.
participation and willingness to wait to see where the end is going to be. Amen? 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 Amen. Now let me ask you a question. I just want to know, anybody offended? I did give you a warning. I let you get your children out. Jessica was wrong. She ain't no child. Daniel was wrong. She ain't no child. These people are eligible to have children. And you shall know the what? So don't look at your mamas and your daddies and think bad of them because they told you the same clothes was coming to town. Play Michael Jackson for you. I know if I played the white version, y'all wouldn't remember that. Trustees, come on, man. Let's get 